Hi everyone, Mature Simmer here. So, welcome to Deer Creek. Decided I'm gonna give this map a try. Not sure, you know, if it's one I'll stick with, but uh, given that it's really the first mod map we have that is complete, uh, or at least complete for quite a while, according to the creator. I figured, let's give it a try. So, just done some of the basics uh, as far as starting out with with what the creator gives us, which is this location here down on the map. If you're unfamiliar with Deer Creek, it's a small, uh, single or base size map. Uh, it's it's not very large, but it has many large fields on it. So we own the farm here, and then we owe field, or owe, we own the farm here, and then we own field one. And we have all the equipment needed to really kind of give it a good go. So let me take a look at the calendar here, see where we're at. It looks like uh, we can plant some canola, or we can um, wait a little bit and plant things, uh, either wheat or barley, later. So they do modify the crop calendar from the base game. So we've got a pretty big silo complex. Uh, we've got this corn dryer here, which obviously means we need some corn if we're going to use it. We have this field. Uh, I cannot speak today. We have this fuel tank to store fuel, which is empty at this point. Um, we've got a little bit of equipment in here, so let's kind of head in and see what we've got. So we've got a tractor and a planter. And then uh, we've got a pickup truck, uh, Thunder Creek, and then a hardy Rubicon here that we can use. There you go. If you eat today, thank a farmer. If you eat in peace, thank a veteran. Very nice. So, and then our other shed is here. We've got some more equipment here. So we've got a harvester, headers, and so forth. And then uh, we do have this big tractor with a cultivator. So if I take a look at our field and see what state we're in. So yeah, if we come in here and look at the map, we can see uh, we do need plowing doesn't look like you know, some of the fields are ready to be harvested. So we can, depending on what they are, um, we might be able to do some work there. Let's see. Field 3 is oats. Field 6 is canola. And field 10 is oats. So we could actually work on any of these, but they basically need the product taken of the grain elevator. Um, so thinking it might be a bit of fun to try some harvesting. So I'm going to go ahead no, I'm probably going to regret this because it's pretty big, but I'm going to accept this contract. And we'll get our equipment over there because there's no reason to borrow the equipment when we have our own. So, let's see what we can do here. So the other thing I'm going to try here is um, I've got the latest version of 
um, course play, which is 7.19 loaded, and I'm hoping that will give us what we need to work these large fields. Hmm. You would think I'm lined up here, but it's not letting me... Oh, there we go. I did see it blink. So we might need to position ourselves a little bit differently. It's a little hard to see here in the shed. Goodness gracious. Let me see. Yeah, it won't let me do that. Hmm. It's a bit more work than you would think. Let's see. It did blink up there for a second, but I'm just wondering how close are we? And might we want to, I don't know, I might want to try to get in there with the tractor and then do this out in the yard. So it's a little hard to maneuver as this is right now. So let me get this harvester out here. And then I'll try to pull this out with this tractor. Drop that. We should be able to maneuver a little bit better with this. And I might just go ahead and This is going to prove a challenge to connect up to. Oops. That didn't work. So, much more difficult to get moving here. But hopefully this will... There we go. Alright. So let's get this out of the shed here. this point, I'm going to go ahead and get myself over to field three. So we should be able to move along here. So yeah, this, uh, map, if you're unfamiliar with it, I'd encourage you to watch the map tour video I have of it that will give you a little bit more of a view of what we've got. But this is based on a real location in Ohio. And not sure exactly which part of it. I tried to find it on some maps, but I can't quite find the exact field layout that this has, but um, as opposed to being a fictional location like a lot of the other maps that have come out so far, this is also the first one that I've seen based on a real location that has emerged, and so you know, there's a, definitely a few interesting things here to intrigue me and at least let me uh, give it a shot. So, pull over here, and I'm going to jump back over to the tractor. Let's see, which one is it? This one? I think so, yep. So, we've got a nice sized header here, so it should make some good work of that field. And then we obviously also will need to get the truck over there. But, you know, oats shouldn't be too bad. And I'm also going to try to set up another part of some automation. And we'll see if we can do that with auto drive. 
to get my grain cart heading over to deliver things. So the wheels are turning on the side, but the way it looks animated, it almost seems like the tracks aren't turning, but we can see the wheels are turning. So, not sure if this uh, tractor is an in game model in the game or one that is added on um, by the modder. There's definitely a few things. If you like anhydrous, you can do that. Um, I frankly not used anhydrous, so maybe it's something I'll experiment with, but right now I'm happy to kind of stick with what... Uh, now that won't work. So I'll just pull it in here. I was going to go ahead and do something. Um, so yeah, we're by the livestock auction. You can hear that's going on. Oops. see is it running oh, no okay just the harvesters so loud it sounds like the tractors running but we actually did have the tractor off it just was running quite a bit so yeah we've got a hundred and forty five acre field here with field three so it's definitely gonna be a little bit of work there Got this header connected up. <coughs> like I said, I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can get course play running here. I'm going to just turn the wages off at this point. Okay. If I do that, create a job. So there we go. We can do course play field work. And we'll start here. Oops. I'm going to go in that direction. Start at the first waypoint. Let's see if I go to the course generator. Yeah, I want sharp headland corners so that it does the most. I want to run two headlands. Normal overlap. Start working the headland. All right, we'll go ahead and before I do that, just in case we have a problem, I'm going to save the game. I think I may need to start the cycle over again, unfortunately, the way this works. All right, sharp two, starting the headland. So let's generate the course. See how this does. All right, there we go. So we can then close the generator. And then we can go ahead and start the job. So let's head out. Let's see what it does. Hmm. It's driving around a little bit more than I'd like. Let's see what happens. Okay. It's lowering the header. That's a good sign. It's starting to count oats. So this is a better result than I have gotten before with course play, but the last time I tried it was with field, um, or was with version 7.4, so we're 15 versions later. So it is nice to see that this seems to be a little bit more 
along the lines of what we'd like to get. Looks like the traffic's getting a little concerned with our spacing. So, um, you know, however that works, they could probably adjust that a bit to have less of an impact. But yeah, this is a pretty large harvester, which is a good thing for fields this large. So you can see, uh, you know, going down a relatively lengthy headland, we're only at 7%. I think this is going to be one of the longer moves down here. Well, that's quite a sharp turn. It did a good job there with the fence. I like that. Yeah, I really don't need the straw swath, but that's okay. Um, I just didn't hadn't turned that off with course play, and it's probably not worth worrying about at this point. So in the interim, while that is continuing, I am going to go jump over to the truck. Um, yeah, that's the pickup. There we go. Oh, I'm not in the map. I was hitting the button to enter the vehicle and it wasn't working, but I was on the worker map. So I'm going to go ahead and um, bring up auto drive. And we're going to put it in edit mode so that we can see things. And I did have it create some paths directly, but it doesn't look like it... Uh, it worked the way I would have liked. But we'll go ahead and start recording here. We'll see if we have any... There we go. We do have some there. So we'll join on to those main road ones. So I'm going to stop that. And then we're going to block traffic a bit after we get hit. <laughs> so... Move around a bit, and we'll get out of the way, and then we'll cycle back in there, because we've got to go this way. But what I need is to be able to link this up appropriately. So I want to go ahead and drop some points in here, so that I get appropriate paths. And if once again you're kind of trying to figure out how do you do this with course play, you can uh, watch my tutorial on course play on how to do route editing like I'm doing here. All right, so that gets us off that road into that path, which we don't necessarily need running along that car, which isn't great, but it's kind of how things work with traffic. And so we'll just make sure we don't have any gaps in the road network here, which we shouldn't, but it could happen, so we're going to keep on the edit. And basically what I want to do is get a working course from field to the um, grain elevator so that when the tractor gets full um, so actually let me, let me do that here goodness that's not what I wanted to have happen that was quite disappointing. Um, that generated a lot of things I didn't want. So, we've got a little bit of cleanup to do here. Wow. All right. The 
let's see if we can... Uh, I knew we... Knew it wouldn't let us get rid of the correct item, but it was worth a shot. So we'll get rid of all these. There we go. And then we're going to have to circle back around. I may need to turn the traffic off here as I do this work, but certainly uh, it wasn't behaving as I would have liked with what happened, since this field doesn't have anything in it. We'll go ahead and drive in here to give ourselves a little bit better... Oh boy. I just can't catch a break. But we'll give ourselves a little bit of a better example there. And now we'll turn this on. And then what we're looking to do is get a path that circles back around so that we can connect it and head back that way. So we'll turn this off and once again we're going to do the same type of thing where we're going to link things up There is just a lot of traffic in this little town here. Not sure I can fit, but we're going to try. So, you're definitely getting a little bit of fun here on the farm, as I'm just trying to tidy things up. Alright, and then here I want to take that to there. And then I need to label this point and we're going to call this Field 3 Unload. So that will be the starting point. And then we change this to Unload Combine. So we're going to do Field 3 Unload. Let's take a look at where the Combine is. He's made some pretty good progress. And he's only at 46%, so we might actually be okay. So, the other thing I'm going to do here is we're going to pull this one up, and now attach this to Field 3 Unload, which we do need to make things work appropriately later. All right. So at this point, we now need to go and drive drive back to the grain elevator, which is way down here and over to the north, a cleaner way. So I am intentionally showing, you know, I guess I'll use my, my favorite term, the way the sausage is made on this, so that if you're unfamiliar with how to do this kind of setup yourself, um, you can see what you need to do at the start of a map, so it's kind of a, I don't know, behind the scenes let's play, I guess, let's say. Um, so let's see here. Alright, so it looks like it actually just generates the path, um, So we want to make the turn here. And once again, the way this is set up right now, it's generating connection points that I don't necessarily need. Whoops. Um, from there, but um, anyway. So now we'll continue on, and this will take us this way to the grain elevator. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull into the grain elevator here. And we're going 
We're going to drive over the pits. It's a little noisy here, so I apologize for that. So we're going to go ahead and label. Green elevator unload. And so the trick is when you're doing auto drive to have it work, you have to have the point after the unload point as far as where you name it because um, otherwise it'll never trigger. Whoops. Need to go over here, but that's okay. We'll give it a little bit of a cleaner sweep. And then we will head over on the other side of the road and head back and reconnect. And that should give us a full delivery network that we can utilize that then will hopefully allow the combine to unload, the truck to be called, and we may have something that we can fully automate, which will give us opportunities on other maps, such as, um, you know, if we wanted to try Hastings again, uh, which is the 16x map, which almost certainly needs some automation on it, but had some challenges. Um, but the challenge was with Hastings, I needed to do a new save game. So if I return to that, um, I'm basically having to start over and repeat what I've done before. So, um, but we'll see. And I don't know at this point that I would, just because, as I said, it's, you know, it's a nice large map, but uh, very flat and, you know, not necessarily one I would do substantial work on. So, I'm stuck on the pole there, so let me back up. possible I'm gonna have a problem you know not just in case I'm gonna I'm gonna run this a different way already because otherwise I think I'm gonna hang up on that pole and that will not be fun all right so one way to test this is at this point I'm now going to put this to the grain unload down here but now I'm going to enable this, and this should drive to field on load 3, which it is. So that did what we wanted. Um, now I probably want to... Um, why is it going... What is it doing? Oh, I see. Now it's trying to unload the combine. Uh, we need to go up this way. And let's see. That opens the cover. So yeah, sometimes you've got to do things a little bit manually on the first couple, or the first pass around until there's a little bit more opening. Because once again, I think we're set to avoid fruit because uh, I am leaving the default settings of crop destruction and all that on, which means, um, you know, we're going to have some challenges on getting things done. I'm trying to be careful of the neighbor's field. I'm not sure I did that great. I think I did take some crop out there with that turn, but doing the best I can with what I've got, but you can see that combine waiting there for us, spinning. And we'll see, I should be able to turn around, I would think, at some point. So it looks like it just barely made it from the corner, but still made a you know, pretty good set of passes. And as this moves along, 
It will. I'm not quite sure why it's not unloading here. Hmm. Well, that's a problem. So I may need to move a little further over. So I'm going to try to do that, again, being cognizant of this guy's field, if I can. There we go. All right, well, if it's going to do that, that's not really going to help, because, yeah, it got rid of 2,800, but... Um, that's not nearly enough to get very far. So the question... Whoa, whoa, that was a very unexpected and very violent reaction to a small pile of straw. <laughs> so hopefully I can get over this with less excitement. I'm going to go ahead and try to start this back up and see if it now will join but I'm not sure that it will. Alright, well, we'll let it do what it's doing. It doesn't appear to be destroying this poor farmer's crop. What I was hoping was going to happen is that it was going to go ahead and try to start to unload. Because the other thing I'm going to go ahead and try to do is I'm going to get the vehicle moving, the tractor moving on our own field, and start plowing. Um, since I have what appears to be a working course play, um, I certainly would like to do that if I could. All right, we're going to let this go around the turn. I don't know if it went wide like that because of me. Doesn't look like it, because it's kind of doing a sloppy job there, too, so... We'll go ahead and do that. And at this point, I should be able to go along and empty this and move along with it. And I don't think it will fill the truck, but I may be surprised. Because I do think that, well, no, at this point, because I have things in the front and back hopper, that 42% is for the entire truck. So... Alright, yeah, at this point, we're basically empty. So I'm going to go ahead and now drive this back and then let it wait and let it run. And more than likely, we're going to need to continue to babysit it because unfortunately, the automation on these. Um, still has some work to get to the level that we had, um, frankly, in FS19. So, once again, I'm going to swing around here. I'm going to go ahead and get back in the line of traffic and let this then go and position itself appropriately where it needs to be. It should wait here, because now it's not that full. And we've got the combine heading this way. So it should wait. And basically, um, you know, what we want to look at here... So at this point, once it gets to 85%, um, it will go unload the truck, which likely will be next time. 
And then the other setting that is important is on the combine. If we look at this button, the pre-call level is 60%. When the combine gets to be 60% full, it will call the truck to come and start unloading. And what that tends to do then is it allows what we just had to happen is the truck should then follow the combine and unload appropriately and um, you know then when it gets to 85 percent or you know closer to 100 because if it's just following along on these long passes we should be okay I do like that um, auctioneer sound that they've put into the map I think it's kind of nice it's definitely a nice touch. So it seems like when you're at the right angle over the auction house that you have that. But yeah, at this point, having a couple headlands should give us plenty of room. I'm now going to go ahead and change back here. And we're going to go ahead and get our field moving for plowing. So I'm going to set that here. And I'm going to once again, I'm going to bring up my course play. Move the map where I can see it. And we're going to create a job. We're going to create some field work. We're going to set the target destination. We're going to set the direction that way. Do the first waypoint. We're going to generate things again, sharp corners. I'm going to do three headlands with the plow. Um, Starting the headland. All right. And we're going to generate the course. And then hopefully we see something that looks good in a bit. This one's having a little bit more trouble, but it does look okay. So we'll close that. So it will avoid that piece. That was my concern. You can see there's quite a bit it needs to do. And we're going to start the job here. And let's see what he does. He should come here and unfold, which he is. So I think we've got a much, much more... Um, functional version of course play here. And so I am not sure if this is going to give us the field work. Um, yeah, it's actually not considering that plowed. So I'm going to have to get a plow. So actually let me stop this then because that is not actually doing what I want. So I was hoping that would get us there. So it looks like I'm going to have to go buy a plow. This is just a cultivator and um, I don't know that we have any large plows available to us, but we will see. All right, so that's what I thought. This is the largest one we have. So I can get a 9 meter version. We're going to see if we can make it John Deere green to match our tractor. We're going to go ahead and buy that, and that will then be at the shop for us to get. And the shop is over near the, um, the grain silo. So I'm going to go ahead at this point and head that way. So what I did is I mistakenly, um, because I was on the piece, I, when, I, when I tried to jump in, I had gone to turn off the job. So let me see, start at the nearest waypoint. 
is what I want. And let's see. So hopefully this will just continue. It looks good. Okay, so maybe all is not lost. But yes, I was just trying to jump over here to see what percent we were at. And I mistakenly terminated my job. So you can use Control h to restart things again. And he's already at the shop, so we're going to want to break him out of this path. And so this map has a nice custom shop here, which is actually really pretty nice. Um, and implements are here. They did a good job painting it up to match me up here. We'll get this connected. We're obviously going to fold it up. And we're going to get back on the road. And we're going to head back. You know, this really is a map because of the size of the fields that does, I, I think, beg automation as we're doing. I think it would be very, very challenging to work this, uh, just running it manually. Um, you know, but at this point, other than a few tests, um, you know, I think we're almost to the point where I'm going to turn off auto drive and kind of get rid of all that work that we're doing on the map. So certainly, uh, you know, on the next episodes as I continue to move this forward over time uh, we'll likely not be seeing all this up I'll just have workers doing their thing um, you know the one thing I have found with FS22 which is why I think it's um, you know going to be more of a challenge and maybe something that I I want to turn off for auto drive too. If I can, I should be able to. Um, is the uh, the costs and so forth? So the driver wages, because otherwise, um, you know, it it really takes money pretty quickly. But if you're trying to play with some realism, obviously, if you're hiring workers, um, you're typically paying them. So, you know, there is there is that piece of it as well. So we'll stick with the tractor here since um, we don't have that much further to go to get to the street. And then we will have the ability to start this up. We're definitely going to need to regenerate the course because uh, this implement is different. Likely means it has a different working width. I say that a little bit tongue-in-cheek because I know it has a different working width. It's probably um, might not be half the width, but it's probably at best 60% of the width. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the automation here. So that will slow things down a bit, because now I don't have two auto drives running. I have one. And once again, I can certainly create um, routes here that, that bring things into the farmyard to do things appropriately. Um, but we'll worry about that later. So I'm going to go ahead here again and head into... the course play. Um, open and close the generator. Nine feet. I don't know if that's correct. It probably is. But let me have it generate the course and we should see more some closer lines with that. So let's just verify that we do. Alright, 
so we want to close that so you can see it's certainly a lot busier um, it's going to take a lot more time but we're going to go ahead and start the job and it should again hopefully get into the field open up and then get moving there we go and now when we look at this we should see that it doesn't need plowing it's just going to need lime so that's what we wanted uh, you know once again we need to kind of go in and out to see it working but so at this point we have everything running um, not quite sure what that is, why there's a indicator like that on my mini-map, but there is. And so yeah, the next thing now to check, um, oh, the truck is up here. Oops, let me make sure now that I'm, yep. Alright, so it is up here, but it's not actually unloading as it goes. So there could theoretically be some adjustments we do, or I could just, um, you know, I'm probably likely just going to let it run and, you know, see what it, it needs to do. Because the challenge here is um, with multiple hoppers, it doesn't always uh, work appropriately. So it tends to do an okay job with it, but sometimes it does not so we'll see how it does because I certainly want to try that it's interesting given the sharp turns I thought normally that would um, behave differently so I'm going to be curious now that it's kind of resetting and then recomputing another path if because I'm assuming that front hopper is full if it will now trigger to the back hopper I would hope so but it may not but let's let's observe and see what happens well, we've got a pretty big field here that it's gonna have to cover Now it's lining up with the front hopper again. So yeah. Um, and the challenge is there aren't any single hopper trailers in the game yet um, that allow us to kind of avoid this problem. So the piece will be um, you know, do we if this gets to a hundred percent will the truck move and appropriately load and unload then we'll be okay because I'm, I'm less concerned when it's automated if it's truly unloading as it goes because it doesn't honestly matter but yeah the behavior normally with the sharp turns or what they you know normally in, in FS19 course play would say turn um, versus smooth where it would kind of go into a corner and back up and actually um, make sure it kind of caught every last bit of the crop. It seems to not be doing that here, uh, where it's just much more of a sharp turn, or maybe smooth would, would hit things a little cleaner, because obviously I'm leaving some hunks on the field, but once again, for what we are doing, um, you know, I'm going to just let it do its thing because to complete this contract we don't have to get 100% of the crops on the field. And obviously even if this was our own field that we were harvesting, we would um, we could go ahead and clean things up too. So, Alright, so if we jump out here, you can see the plow is continuing to make its way around. Field 1 is the largest field on the map, so the one we own is bigger than this one. 
not by much. I think it's maybe 10 acres, but um, you know, it's still pretty hefty. But yeah, the challenge ends up being if I use all my fees in AI workers and then basically make just a little bit of money, that's really not going to help. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the truck and then go here and I'm going to change that to zero and apply. And I think because I was changing settings, I caused it to uh, kind of disengage. It should go and catch up pretty soon, maybe. It's waiting for the call now, so. But you can see the, the money has stopped. Um, so the other thing I'm going to go and do um, is go ahead and get a spreader. And I think we're going to get the larger breed all because obviously we need the largest thing we can do. We want the extension. We want the wider discs. Wow, 88,000. We don't have enough money for this. Because, hmm. yeah, if we do this and that doesn't spread lime. So we may have to wait until we get this work done to um, get the lime on our field. I was going to go ahead and get a spreader and then start spreading lime, but we don't have enough money to do that. So let's see what happens now at 100%. So it should unfold the pipe, and then we should see the truck get called shortly after that. And so... Here he comes. You know, and usually the truck now will do a better job now that we've actually got some field for him to maneuver on where he won't go into the other crops. I mean, it may prove me wrong. It's definitely in the grass more than I would have expected. But we'll see if this goes to the back hopper, because if it doesn't, we're going to have, obviously, a problem here. But if it does, then the next piece we need to see is, does it um, do a good job on getting to the silo and dumping? And once we have that, we have everything working. Alright, it did go to the back question is, oh boy, so now it's going to stop and then it's likely not going to reset to the back. I guess we'll see if it comes up again. Because yeah, this won't be the most efficient way to do this if this is going to operate this way. The other thing I could do is we do have that auger wagon. I could have a tractor follow along with the auger wagon, and that's just a one hopper piece, and then see if I could come up with a way to have the, um, the truck go to the auger wagon once it's full. But I'm not quite sure how that would work, because yeah, at this point, all right, so let me see if I change this. Active unloading. So I'm going to say no for that, and then maybe it will just wait when it unloads. So let's see if that works. 
because then if that does, then that'll work, and I won't have to make it overly complicated. So this is some of the challenge with trying to automate some things on Farming Simulator that you run into sometimes, is just, um, you know, things don't always work at the level that you'd like them to. And, you know, this is certainly a little bit easier than me driving every vehicle, because obviously when it's all, if I can get it all working, and with large fields like this, you know, you still have time to troubleshoot, and it's not like, oh, gee, the field is done within one harvester load, and, you know, I've lost all that, that, uh, value. But yes, at this point, if it does the same thing, and it starts loading in the back hopper, and it doesn't move. Uh, don't move. Don't. Why? Why, why, why? Hmm. Alright. So, let's see. Is there another one? No, that should really be it, but... Because the harvester should wait. Yeah, this is unfortunate because, you know, it's just, it's extremely inefficient the way it's doing it because, um... I mean, you can see why it is because of, of how it's operating there. So it will go ahead at this point and um, should get, well, maybe not. It might fill up before it gets to the end here. Uh, maybe we'll be okay. So then it'll start running the... Uh, the regular rows, because now it's done the two headlands. So at this point, I think it'll pick up the header, run all the way down, and then it'll start doing the uh, the rows. If I go here, now yeah, let's see. So I guess it'll do. There we go. It'll go that way, and then we'll do some of this, and then. It'll now just keep running back and forth. And you know, now it'll get the rest of this field done that way. So I've not observed this because honestly I couldn't get course play to work at this level. Alright, so it looks like... You know, it's leaving some on the edge, and yeah, now it's probably full, so it's going to go ahead and try to unload, and unfortunately, again, as soon as the truck gets there, it's going to pull away, and yeah, sometimes it does get caught in these kind of loops, so you can see it's planning path one of two, planning path two of two. You know, we may not have an option here, so this is where sometimes you'll you know, if you leave this to go, you'll check it, and, and you may find the truck got stuck, you may find something else happened. But at this point, um, I'm just going to manually drive this truck to get this thing filled up, to make some progress. Because again, I want to see if I have everything built appropriately. Hard to hard to line up here too. Um, as far as what's actually lined up with the pipe, 
because there's a bit of a challenge with that. Okay, there we go. We'll see if we can at least keep moving along, maybe get a little bit more out of here. And at the end of the field, it may stop rather than trying to turn around. So I'll just have to be careful here. Because it's not going to go very far. But if not, we're at over 85%, which also helps. Alright. So he may empty at this point, And then... I'm not going to... Alright. So there we go. So we'll turn it back on. Goodness gracious, really? Don't tip me over! Oh my goodness. Well, that was not good. Alright. So at this point, I've got to turn this off. Ugh. Well, this is terrific. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get off this truck. There we go, we did. Oh my goodness. It's really embarrassing when you turn your own truck over, isn't it? Now I'm going to get stuck with traffic, probably, or not be able to fit. Oh my god. Because, yes, I need to get on the other side. And then turn the truck upright again. So, that is not what I wanted to see in any way, shape, or form. Alright. Thank goodness. So, now let me switch back to the truck. Turn it back on. See what it's going to do. Alright, so now it's going to exit the field. Alright, and while it's doing that, I'm going to try to get this one appropriately set up. Um, and operating in a way that gets me back on track here. So that should continue. There we go. Alright, now he's trying to turn around. So let's follow, get on board with the truck. Good news is he was able to make the turn. And now we just need to see if he fully unloads at the grain silo. And if he doesn't, we unfortunately have a situation where it's somewhat automated, but yet not fully automated. So, And let's see. All right, looks like we're on our second pass on the plow. So that work, luckily, is moving along. That's this field here, so you can see the plow lines where it went around. So we're doing our job there, which is great. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and slow this down to real time, because we're already at 1434, and obviously we've barely done anything. So my guess is... Um, you know, we might get these fields done now before midnight, given that I've stopped it. But uh, this was similar to the problem I had where you know, we've taken basically six hours and we've gone twice around the field um, in both cases, and, and that's it. So that obviously is far, far too long for these fields. So you may need to operate this in a real-time or even a half-time situation, and I may go ahead and change that right now to try to make up for some of that. 
So let's see. And actually, yeah, because of the way the unload works, this may actually work well. Um, so let me just make sure that on this contract... 7% transported. And now it should pull forward and stop, which it does. All right, so I think we're good. So we got 28%, 29. So it is working well. And now we should see the field three unload go green once it hits that point of the grain elevator unload. But this is what I meant, that you need to have it past the unload point where it doesn't work right. But yeah, this looks good. And then uh, by the time it gets back, you know, the harvester likely won't be full. Obviously I manually did that, so I've, I left a good amount of crop on the field there. But we're getting to the point now where it will be doing the full width of the field um, with this row then all the way up, and then obviously we're going to have the substantially longer ones when we get up there. So the good news is, you know, we do have at least um, enough automation now that I think it, it, it makes things a little bit playable, for sure. Um, But yeah, you're, you know, just with the timing, you're going to have to adjust the time down to, in essence, real time if you're doing large fields. Or just add a lot of days per month and then, um, you know, do things. So let's see. So here comes the truck. You know, and once again, because we're, we're dealing with... Um, With various pieces and yeah the, the other piece that's going to be interesting is like these are all rocks on these fields I do have the rocks turned on right now it may honestly be unplayable um, with large fields like this um, to do that because I I don't think there's any rock pickers that are more than five meters and uh, you know, as you might imagine, that's going to be pretty substantial. Yeah, this is, um, you know, even with the early and late drops, I mean, it doesn't appear to have left a lot here, but it looks like for whatever reason down there, it left some things on the field. It's definitely turning very tightly. But, um... You know, there's definitely tweaks that, that need to happen to not make this not really work well. Because, yeah, obviously it left a little bit there. And then, like I said, I think it turns very quickly. Well, it's actually not. So this, I think it's because it's at an angle, is the problem. So yeah, see, it's leaving that little bit. Because this isn't a... It's not attacking this field squarely. So, yeah, there's, there's a bit of calculation that it would need to do or, or do differently. So there's the truck waiting to unload. Oh, there's our tractor actually, so that's a pretty nice... Um, Alright, so I'm back here on the map again, just kind of seeing where we're at. And you can see the truck's just driving up. Once again, it's the front hopper, so that usually works pretty well. It's the back hopper that gives us some challenges. I think we'll empty ourselves out here uh, before the end of the row, so we will have a empty harvester. Uh, 
it's you know more than 8,000 liters can certainly fit in the truck there so there we go so yeah at this point I think um, you know it's pretty clear how things are gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and let this work get completed um, I've certainly spent enough time just showing you the initial setup and and work uh, we do know we have things running so I'm going to turn off the edit mode on auto drive and actually hide the window because there's not really a reason we need that at this point so that'll clean up the screen as we go along but I will let this continue and once everything is done uh, I'll definitely hop back in and take a look. I do see now this cloud coming up. Do we have a weather problem at some point? No, it's just going to get cloudy. But right now, um, yeah, no rain all the way to the end of the day. So, so that is a good thing. But yeah, this actually takes us all the way over to the co-op. There's our farm over there. So, um, you know, there's definitely some distance. There's definitely some size to these fields. Um, so this, once again, becomes a question of... You can see we're churning up quite a few rocks. Um, you know, I may... Yeah, I'll probably go ahead just to try everything out and let this play out as it is and see what the workload is on, on a, f a map like this with the equipment we have. But until we start seeing larger plows, um, you know, but even if we do see larger plows, you know, these, these are not inconsequential fields when they're 150 plus acres for one field so um, so it does take a bit we obviously had seen the tractor going by here and there we can see the harvester now from the other direction so it is a map that you can definitely give some life to with some automation um, which is nice because you can, you know, once you have enough money that you can buy equipment, you'll be able to do a lot of things to, um, you know, to get things done that way. And, uh, you know, get some life into the map for sure. So, I mean, it's just right now we're far enough away, I think, where we've basically, it's not rendering the combine, obviously, it didn't vanish, but we're not seeing it. There it is, now it's coming back into view. But obviously you can kind of see there's, um, you know, a good amount. So here in the sharp turn, it does appear to be operating as I was expecting with the combine, but for whatever reason. Although, yeah, see, it's still left a little piece there, so. It's definitely not, uh, yeah, not perfect, but. All right, so enough at this point. Uh, once I'm done, I will return, so I'll see you then. All right, we're back here pretty late on the first day here on Deer Creek and as I've been working uh, and as the system's been working I've kind of progressed to the point where I've made the call I'm gonna rename the purpose of these type of series because um, I think it'll be a little more indicative of what's happening and instead of calling it a let's play I'm gonna be calling it a let's try um, because in essence, what happens at the beginning of any map is a lot of trial and error to see what makes sense on how to make things work. So I'm popping in here at this point 
we finished up field three, but I ended up because I need a good amount of money to start making any other progress. That auctioneer works all hours of the day. Um, but anyway, sorry for the <laughs> quick, quick interruption of him in the in the stream. So as you can see, I'm running at half time. These fields are huge. What I ended up trying to do is I let the game run overnight because I knew I just had so much work. And so the plowing of the field to the south of us here, which is field one that we own, is done. Um, turn on my lights. And because of some of the challenges with auto drive and course play, uh, what I assumed would happen happened is that the truck got hung up and had jackknifed on the road. And so the harvesting hadn't finished on three. In the process, however, um, you know, I also noticed some other contracts come up. I think they were there already. So I grabbed the contracts for field six and ten. What I then discovered is when we started delivering grain to the grain elevator, the oats off field three, it was actually giving us credit on the contract for field 10 to the point where we're now 100% delivered on field 10 in grain. But the problem I then have, if we look here, is I'm 99% on this contract even though I'm fully done because basically uh, probably a truckload of grain uh, was credited to field 10. So the nice thing is we're almost complete and so when I work on field 10 it's going to use up that that grain and it, it will then credit it I assume to field 3. So once again that's why we're certainly in let's try mode. The other thing that's happening that I have not figured out why is I keep getting vehicle running costs that occur every hour, hour and a half, and they're substantial. They're like $8,000, um, which is what has chewed us down to 46000 here, and we're still on the first day. I haven't bought any more equipment. I did have to buy fuel for the harvester because uh, it basically was nearly empty. So I bought 2,000 liters of fuel, which I think was, you know, like $2,700. I think it was 27.50, um, and so that's in the tank that we have on our farm. You know, whatever's left. I, I think we probably have 1,500 or 600 liters of fuel left out of that purchase that we can still add into our equipment. Um, but basically, uh, I'm going to try to do that, and then. I've left the straw on the field, and I'm planning on doing that rather than accepting the contract in that uh, there is a mod that has existed, which is Collect Straw from Missions, which lets you grab that material off the field and then just provides us another way to make a little bit of money. And in my head, I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, I'm not viewing it as I'm gaming the system or cheating in any way because, uh, you know, it's certainly a conversation you could have. Is if the farmer's not paying you for bailing, it's like, well, do you mind if I bring my own equipment and do that? And so I'm still going to do that on field three. And so with all that and the fact that all of that's going to take massive amounts of time, um, that's what we're trying so, hence again, my brilliant idea of calling it, right now, a Let's Try series that maybe will convert to a Let's Play series in the future. Um, and again, it may simply be within the, within the game itself that we'll just be like, well, now we know what we're doing and how we're going to execute, but some of that just takes having more work to do and more money and like I said I don't know where I'm hemorrhaging the money in 
the other areas with the uh, vehicle running costs because we have everything turned off for course play and um, auto drive so it's not those features I'm trying to fit around the telephone pole here and we'll see if we can do this or if now I've totally caught myself that looks like we're over the fence there we go so I'm basically trying to line up here and then again turn on my course play have it do its thing but I've moved from 10 to 3 because as you can see or from 3 to 10 and I'm gonna go ahead now and you know get that work done so we're gonna create the job gonna do field work we're gonna do it here in this direction we'll set it at first waypoint for now we're gonna open the generator and we're gonna generate field work okay there we go so we can close the generator so that certainly looks reasonable and we're gonna go ahead and start the job is blocked by an object. Interesting. What object would that be? It might be that it's not ready to go. In that regard, let me see if I reinitiate this. Yeah, so I think it was just simply because it wasn't um, wasn't unfolded. So kind of the wrong error. It really wasn't blocked by an object. It was just not ready to go. But yeah, at this point, I'm just trying to find a way to maximize some money, so I may end up renting bailing equipment, but I'm worried that financially is going to suck too much money away, because if I have operating costs as well, along with rental costs, it may turn out to be very little. So the only thing I can think of is the operating costs have something to do with auto drive and and the truck. So um, I'm going to have to play around with some of that, see if that goes away when I'm done with harvesting. But the challenge is kind of not to go into the point where I have no money before I finish these fields. So my hope is that um, the next load of oats I'm going to start basically getting cash back for the excess oats um, even though I'm you know all done with three and really have delivered everything I need there but so that's where we're at. Um, and I'm just going to keep letting this plow along in the background, and we'll see what we learn. All right, so I'm complete with field 10 as far as harvesting. And now I've gone ahead and rented a baler. And then I need to rent a bale wagon, obviously. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do here. But this is the least expensive square baler. Um, I could own a small baler for um, 22000 and debated that for a bit, but I'm just not sure how much I'm going to, to work on this uh, normally. So, because part of it is really determinant on how lucrative this will turn out to be. So this can do 180 centimeter to 240 centimeter bales. And at this point I'm just doing whatever the default is, so I'm assuming um, Let's 
see. Oops, no, nope, we don't want to return it. So yeah, it really isn't telling me at this point. I'll just assume it's 180. And again, I like the square balers because they tend to just drop the the bales as they uh, run around. So I don't have to stop and unload, which is why personally I've always liked the, uh, the square balers. But this is a small enough field that I'm going to go ahead and just run this one manually. Not sure what I'm going to do on the larger one. Because typically, um, you would look at the, uh, the track you had. And I did try to save the harvester track. I'm just not sure that it really saved it. Um, but if I had that, I could just run over that same track with the baler, and then it, it's an easy course play thing. But once again, I'll have to give that a try and see if I can get that to work or not. That was interesting. I wonder if that was because I was near the edge of the field and the fence, why that camera came in there like that. I think I've dropped one bale. The other thing is these are like 8,000 liters instead of 4,000 liters. So these are certainly double the size of, of what I'm used to with, with bales. And then the Arc Sun bale wagon um, will hold, I think, 28 bales. So we'll see how that all plays out. But at this point, that's what I'm going to try to do. And so I did gain um, about 20,000 from the oats that I was able to uh, over-harvest from the fields. And then this lease, as, as I think you saw, was 8,000. And that's assuming I, I get things done relatively quickly. So I can't imagine it's going to take me more than a day, especially at the slower, slower time. And again, um, I, I think it's kind of the six and one half dozen of the other as to whether I run more days a month or go ahead and just run at a slower pace. I mean, either way, I think things progress, but as far as things that charge you per day, obviously slower pace is going to, in theory, save me some money in that regard. And in any event, it's just kind of enjoying the gameplay and so forth that's, that's more crucial. So let's see, it looks like you know, about five, 6,000 liters, and then it drops the, uh, the bale off. So we'll see how all that plays out. Try to stay on track here as much as we can. I did a terrible job there. But again, the, the little bit that's left is, at this point, not really worth the time it's going to take to get every last bit off the field, especially since this is extra anyway. And once again, I'm able to do this because I have the Collect Straw Admissions mod, which gives me the ability to do exactly that, which is uh, what I'm doing, is collecting straws, straw off of the contracts I have. Alright, I 
think that oh, I still missed a piece, uh, and now I'm probably going to miss more. Ooh, that's a pretty significant amount, but so again, this is more about trying than perfecting right now. And between this field and then obviously the much larger, you know, seven times plus the size of this field on field three, um, I think I'm going to have enough straw to truly have my fill of it. So more, more focused on, as I said, kind of uh, collecting this than I am any other piece and right now once again the challenge is um, I don't have GPS on any of my equipment because it doesn't come with it and at 15,000 um, given the little bit of money I had to start that's a bit of a luxury that I really can't afford so I am gonna have to drive this manually or you know through some sort of automation GPS will not be an option. You know, obviously, I, I have enough that I could do 15,000, but the goal is to to try to start making some forward progress here. I do have the truck um, stopped and turned off, sitting at the uh, grain elevator. So this will also give me a chance to take a look and see if the vehicle running costs have anything to do with that, or potentially do. I mean, once again, I am running my own tractor, but at this point, um, you know, obviously I've got the baler as well, which is going to have some some costs for the leasing. So I would hope that all goes under leasing costs, but I don't frankly know how that's going to work. So I'm going to continue on here and pick up these bales. Um, and after this field, I'll return and we'll take a look and we'll see what our financial situation looks like. But actually, yeah, I'm going to actually return once I rent the, um, the bailing wagon as well, um, the trailer, because that's obviously the next step in the process. So I will see you in a bit. All right, so change of plans as always. Um, gone ahead and I've finished bailing 10. I'm now heading over to bale 3. In the interim, I've also started a course play on field six, the canola field. So this won't drop any straw swath to pick up. So there won't be any bailing on this. But at least we can have this work done. At this point, it's done um, you know, quite a bit. It's gone down this side, so I started from there. So this field is, you know, still pretty large. As we see here, it's 76 acres, so it's about half the size of field three. And again, I haven't completed any of those fields because I haven't picked the bales yet. But I made the change in plans, basically, because otherwise I'm leasing both a baler and a bale trailer. And right now, um, you know, it's not as if I can really run those together. I may be able to do that, and maybe that's something I try in the future. But right now I'm more focused on just making sure the work can get done. And as such... Um, you know, I'm focusing on one piece and the other, because otherwise, um, if I don't have both running together, it's really a waste of resources to do that. I would like to grab one of the fertilizer contracts, but at this point, it's only letting me take 
the three contracts I have, which is, you know, more than base FS19 does. You were allowed to take multiple contracts with a mod, but, you know, in base game, in 22, it does let you do that, so that's good enough, because at this point, you know, we're talking, you know, over 100,000 in contract value, plus whatever else I, I do. So it looks like we've gotten here, and we can now begin uh, the bailing here. Let's see, is it not on? Yeah, I think it's just not functional. I did also verify that I, oh, it's still non-functional. I must have picked up the pickup. But um, I also did verify we're actually making the large bale size, the 220 centimeter, which I think will be fine because I'm not fulfilling a contract here. Um, that is something I've run into that's kind of been problematic with FS22 before is with the variation sometimes um, contracts uh, can't be fulfilled with certain size things and it doesn't really give you that information. So it's a bit of a, a challenge and a problem, but so in any event, that is the logic of what I'm doing. You know, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, at the time is um, going slow because I have it at, at half time so that I can focus on getting the contracts done today. And then, you know, I'll, I might do some fertilizer contracts or something to start off tomorrow, depending on what's available. Because one fertilizer contract has come and gone in the time I've been working, so... It's entirely possible they'll all be gone again. And for that, um, depending on where I end up with cash, I may have to lease that. But we'll worry about that when we get there. Um, and talk about that when we get there. So for now, you know, I've got the vast expanse of field three to focus on for quite a long time and once we're done there or uh, you know and we'll continue working on the canola and see if we can make some money there obviously that contract will be able to be turned in when done plus whatever canola bonus we get so we should get above a hundred thousand as long as we don't lose any further money uh, to vehicle work and so forth, but we'll see how everything goes. So I'll see you in a bit. So I'm returning from the harvest of field six. I'm going to actually create the uh, point to drive in to the yard at this point. As obviously that is an important piece trying to figure out if I can and yeah, that driveway is too small so I'm definitely going to want to uh, create a point here where I can begin to drive into the yard so I'm going to Change to the truck. Because at this point, I do need him to stop. But, um... I just can't seem to get those correct, but anyway. Um, I think because I switched, I lost my connection there. Well, maybe not. So I'm going to 
go ahead and I'm going to label this one farm. And that will at least let us drop things off and get things back when we're done as we are today. Now the baler is still running, so I'm not done with the work of today. So I do want to be clear on that, that we in fact are not done. Um, Alright. There we go. So that should get us the roundabout way to get here. You know, I think I have a workshop somewhere. It's just, I think it's unfortunately in the shed. So I might not be able to effectively do what I need. But let's see if I pick farm. I think that'll drive all over the map, but that's okay. But yeah, we're up at 97,000, which is good. Because the leasing on the baler is um, getting a little much. So I'm going to go ahead now and... Um, grab the uh, bailing wagon so I'm going to run this to the store which is another point I need to establish as well But at this point, we'll be able to um, to run it that way, and that will work. And get us close, and then I can create a shop link as well. But at least now we can leave the yard, as you can see. And we're basically heading down this way. What I ended up doing um, while that is running over, we'll hop over here, is basically setting up a path that skips a row because it was getting stuck when it got to the end and so was taking quite a bit. But, you know, we've got bales all over the field got some things we may have missed, but um, again, I'm just going to try to get the majority of this done, because there are some when it lined up that it didn't work. The other thing I did to get this to work is basically I generated the same path as the harvester, so I set the working width on this to be the same as the harvester, and then generated the path. I was unable to find a way to load a saved course, even though in theory it says it's saved, but I think the way it saves is it's, if at best, it saves to um, the same piece of equipment, and obviously since that first course was the harvester, and this is a tractor, um, you know, they didn't line up. So, let me take a look, because I don't want to go too far here. But once I get near the store, I'm going to switch out. You know, so the important thing is I kind of got done what I wanted to get done today, which was the harvesting. But, um, you know, obviously the baling and the baling pickup is going to take some time. And I was able to grab the fertilizing contract when I got rid of the canola contract, so it seems that I'm allowed to grab three contracts at a time. But that is it. Let me make 
make sure I'm not going too far. Alright. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead. I'm not sure. Oh, it did link to the correct one. Okay. So that's good. So, we'll set this to shop. And then once again, just run the link around appropriately. And that will get us what we need. We just need to connect it. And so, yeah, I mean, I really want to be able to come from every direction, but right now I'm not going to get too picky. And I'm going to go ahead and get the bale loader. As I said, I'm going to go ahead and get this Arc Sun. Yeah, because I don't believe... I think these will store 28, but I don't think they... Um, they load. So, I'm going to customize this, lease it. So we're going to go ahead and lease that at this point. And that should get us what we need. The tractor and the spreader are from our contract, so they're here for us when I'm ready to pick that up. But I wanted to make sure that that contract didn't go away. And I will continue to do that. So at this point, I do think I've certainly got more than enough for the initial episode of this, what's turned into Let's Try. And um, so I'm going to wrap it up here, letting you know that I'll be picking up these bales. Why is this not picking up the bales? Because at this point, normally, you know, I guess I'm slightly off, but I'm like, normally, if I'm kind of touching it, that's enough. All right. Not quite the same as what I'm used to with, with this in FS19, but it did pick it up. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get these bales picked up, get them to the bale sales point, and then uh, we'll see what happens. So, at the start of the next episode, we'll definitely have some more news to share on what everything looked like, and we'll at least probably be going on the fertilizing, if not other things that are related to our, um, our one field we own, because I do need to lime and so forth, and I should have enough money at that point to buy a spreader, which will then allow me to pick up things like fertilizing contracts, um, you know, and do them appropriately. Come on. Anyway, you don't need to see me wrestle with this, but that's part of the fun of bale pickup. And I'll just keep doing that. And uh, the hope is we'll make some good money off of it. So I will see you next time.